see them every day on TV, reminding us to carry an umbrella and telling us how to dress to stay warm or cool. They're meteorologists, also known as atmospheric or environmental scientists. As a meteorologist, you'll study weather processes and climate trends and report them to the public or agencies needing weather information. You could work for the government, and there are lots of fine meteorologists with the National Weather Service, without whom the television weathercasters would be, well, uh, we'd be at a huge loss if we didn't have them. There are many options for people who study meteorology, but the one that most people think of is the guys that are, and the ladies that are on TV. You know, you can go into meteorology and not want to do the television thing. You have a love for the weather, but you don't want to do the TV thing, which is fine. There are private weather companies like AccuWeather, and your job is to forecast, and that forecast is sold to television stations. Sometimes it's sold to newspapers, that kind of thing. There are private companies that have meteorologists. Meteorologists learn about the air that surrounds the Earth, what it's made of, and how it moves. And they also learn about the effects of pollution in the atmosphere. The job is much more than just predicting day-to-day -day weather. It involves gathering and analyzing weather data to look for long-term trends. You know, the one thing I've noticed is you can have a lot of the science, but there is certainly an art side to it. It's taking what happened in the past, remembering what happened in the past, and saying, well, you know, this is what the computer is telling me is going to happen. But I remember two, three years ago, these events were coming together, very similar to what we're observing now, and, and realizing that, hey, you're dealing with chaos. You're dealing with an atmosphere that doesn't necessarily behave as predicted. If you're interested in this profession, you'll prepare yourself for three possible areas of concentration. Physical meteorology, which is the study of the atmosphere's chemical and physical properties. Climatology, the science of collecting, analyzing, and interpreting past records to determine trends. And operational meteorology, which is the study of weather forecasting. You know, when students ask, are they going, how could I get into that? What do I need to do to, to put myself in that position? I always say, take the math, take the, some of the science, but really concentrate on the math and get a good foundation for that, and then the rest will be easy. Do your math, uh, study your science, learn as much about that as you possibly can. It'll be a great springboard for college, which is what you really need. In high school, you'll need courses that prepare you for college. Four years of English, three years of math, and three years of social studies. You need to also study computer science, technical writing, earth science, chemistry, physics, environmental science, trigonometry, pre-calculus, and calculus. If you're interested in becoming a broadcast meteorologist, you should also take courses in public speaking, writing, and foreign language. I went to the State University of New York at Brockport, which is part of the U, uh, yeah, SUNY system. Sure. Uh, it's up near Lake Ontario, and then I did a master's degree at the University of Akron. You can earn a bachelor's degree in atmospheric science and meteorology at about 75 U.S. colleges. About 40 of them offer advanced degrees, which you'll need to do if you plan to work on research or in certain government positions. Plan on four years of college for your bachelor's degree, two additional years for a master's, and another two or three more for a Ph.D. We don't make a ton of money. We get a very regular kind of a salary, and the salaries keep going down as more and more channels show up and more and more opportunities to view. And you can get the weather on you know, whatever you're holding in your hand, as well as the stock market and the scores and everything else. So we are not a profession with a lot of money. I'm a teacher, full-time teacher, and the meteorology thing is a part-time uh, job for me. And it's a mixture of radio and television. And uh, it's just a fill-in when people are sick or vacations. And it works perfectly with the teaching because most people are gone on the holidays, uh, summer break, and those are the times I'm not teaching. So it actually ends up working well. So how much money do meteorologists make? It depends on where you work. A lot of meteorologists work for the U.S. government through the National Weather Service. To work there, you need to be accredited by the American Meteorological Society. In 2008, the average wages of environmental scientists were about $62,000. In that same year, there were about 85,900 people working as environmental scientists in the United States. And when people ask and give me, give me uh, trouble about you know, the forecast, they say, listen, I'm in the prediction department, not the creation department. So if I was in the creation department, I would be making a lot more money.